here we are, welcome back to Live Darts. We are here at Alexandra Palace and we've got legendary broadcaster John Wing. John, only fitting to get you on. Last night the curtain came down on the great Raymond Van Barneveld's career. What was your overriding thoughts from last night? I didn't know, nobody knew that it would be his last night. But I did say that uh, should he lose that game, then I, will have, I would have seen his first ever World Championship match uh, against uh, Keith Sullivan of Australia back in 1991 at uh, the Lakeside, Frimley Green. I was covering those championships right through the 90s. I covered those championships for BBC Radio Sport. And uh, that was the first time I came across Barney and uh, he lost in the first round 3-0 and as far as uh, everybody there was concerned he was just another also run who, whom we may never hear of again. But of course that, that, cha that changed in time uh, and two years later he appeared at uh, Frimley Green again and he played John Lowe in the, f in the early round, in the first round and lost 3-2 and everybody suddenly sat up uh, and said this Dutchman can play darts even though he lost it was a fantastic game uh, Lowy went on to win that uh, world championship but of course it was the last unification world championship that was Barney's second and I continued after the uh, schism, uh, call, call, going to Frimley Green, going to the lakeside to cover it for BBC Radio and it was a strange situation because of course I, I was involved with the first ever PDC World Championship or WDC World Championship at the Circus Tavern. People saw me or heard me on television from the BDO and then next week I was sort of travelling from one to the other and in fact they overlapped. The semi-finals of the WDC World Championship was on the same day as the start of Frimley Green. So I was, I got my car, we was, we, 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 we tra I travelled from near the Circus Tavern, round the M25, round to Frimley Green for the very first afternoon of the BDO World Championships. Then when they'd, the afternoon session had finished, I had to go back to F Circus Tavern to do, and I asked for the second semi-final because obviously there had been a bit of a rush to be there. That was no problem. I did the second semi-final at and then on the Sunday, I did the same. I went round to Frimley Green for the Sunday afternoon. And after all, I was working for the BBC. And then uh, Sunday night, I went back and, and, and did the final uh, of the World Championship at the Circus Tavern. Now, and then on the Monday morning, I would uh, make my way round and stay for the week at uh, Frimley Green. And you can imagine the kind of reception I got from some because I was seen as a WDC. And I remember somebody said, I shall not name him, you're, he said, you're WDC. I said, oh no, no, you've got it mixed up. I said, last week I was SKY, this, this week I'm BBC. I said, so I suggest you put that in your PIPE -E and smoke it. <laughs> anyway, uh, then Barney really came to the fore in 95. He reached the final against Richard Burnett. But the semi-final he played against Martin Adams was absolutely spellbinding. It was one of those games that you, you just cannot forget. Uh, and that for me was when Barney really became big uh, and having reached the final against Richard Burnett, uh, although he lost that final I think he was firmly on the map then. and he done not I think a lot of Dutch supporters then came on board and the game started to grow as a result of his efforts plus to a lesser extent there was a role and shot. Back in 95 and into his first final Yes. Did you ever envisage him going on to win five world titles and doing what he did? Even though he was a very good player, did you think he was going to be that good? Oh yes, I, I think it became evident. That semi-final against Martin Adams, who was absolutely on top notch at that time, uh, 
convinced me that he was a player of genuine star quality. Uh, not potential, star quality. And, uh, and of course he went on to prove it by winning titles. I was there when he won the title in 98. I was there, it was my last year actually. My last year when he won it again in 2000. Uh, or 99 rather because Ted Hankey won it in 2000, 99, he beat Ronnie Baxter, and, uh, 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 and I was convinced, everybody was convinced then that Barney was a star, and there was no doubt about it. He became, without shadow of doubt, the best player in the BDO. And in fact, in 1999, Barry Hearn, long before he became involved with the PDC, set up this challenge at Wembley Arena. It was an hour's dance on ITV and it was, uh, the programme probably lasted an hour and a half with intros and, 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 and adverts, commercial breaks. It was an hour's play, Taylor against Barney. It was a fantastic, and I did the commentary with Eric Bristow on, on ITV and, um, and Taylor beat Barney 21-10. So they played 31 legs in an exactly 60 minutes dart. Barney, although Barney lost that and lost it convincingly, nobody was surprised because Taylor was just so dominant at that period. Uh, but it didn't take any shine away from the fact that Barney was still the best player from the BDO and, uh, and remained thus, I think, until he left after his 2006 final when he was defeated by Yella Klassen. When he moved over, was there question marks that could he compete with the very best? Because at that time the gap between the BDO and the PDC was growing. What, was there ever a doubt that he could compete and come over and, and do what he did? I didn't detect it. I, I do believe that uh, everybody knew that um, Barney would add something to the uh, PDC rather than uh, diminish it in any way. Uh, I mean, by then a number of people had come across. With, with you know, Roland Shelton was left out of the 32 for the. Who uh, was a, an avid BDO man, and there are a few others who would never ever think of leaving the BDO, eventually came across, uh, mainly because in some cases they were, they, they perceived themselves to have been mistreated by the BDO, uh, and they came across. But Barney's was the one that really caught the imagination, and um, everybody wanted to be at his first, um, his first match, which was the 2006 Premier League. He automatically went into the Premier League. And it was at Blackburn, I remember. Uh, King's Hall in Blackburn. And um, uh, it, was, it was just amazing. It was, I've likened it to two top World Championship boxers from different codes having an elimination fight. I mean, that could have been said of 1999, but especially by 2006. And that year, Barney and Taylor played in several big, big matches. And oddly enough, Barney nearly always came out on top. I remember doing the UK final, the UK Open at Bolton, and Barney played Taylor in the quarter final. Taylor, I think it was five legs to, went into the first break, 4-1, and Barney just went into one of those surges, which I know, which you see from all the top players. A sudden surge, you get it from the likes of Anderson, Gary Anderson, um, from Phil Taylor, from Raymond Van Barneveld, you get it now from Michael Van Gerwen and all the top players. They will have a period of, of, of in any game, they will have a period of six or seven legs where they can do nothing wrong and, and, and that's what I call a, a sudden surge and Barney hit one of those surges and left Taylor in his wake in the end he knocked him out in the quarterfinals and um, then there was the same year when they met in the semi-final of the Desert Classic and uh, this was um, Big event, obviously, in Las Vegas. They met in the semi-final. It was first to four sets, so best of seven. Taylor went two sets to nil up, and Barney looked down and out. 
and I can see him now looking across to Sylvia, his wife at the time. She was encouraging him and that. And then Barney just hit one of those periods again, I can only call it a surge. And he ended up beating Taylor 4-3 in a magnificent match. I think it was his final because he played John Partin in the final and never really quite found his best form. I think beating Taylor was in fact the final form. Um, and then of course, uh, that game was uh, almost, uh, uh, that was a rehearsal if you like for the actual world final six or seven months later when they met at uh, at the Circus Tavern, the very last last darts thrown at the Circus Tavern, uh, competitively. In fact, the last dart thrown was Barnevelt's double top. And Barnevelt is the champion of the world. And that's a moment I shall never forget. I was commentating with Sid, and Sid and Dave Lanning started, uh, and I was to join it a little bit later on. Uh, best of uh, 13 sets, so I was to join it at the second break, I think, which which would have been after, no, it wouldn't have been after 10 sets, but at a convenient time. The producer Rory Hopkins, because Phil Taylor went 3 nil up and Barney didn't even look as though he was going to win the set. Because, uh, because of that, Barney did win the fourth set, and Rory said, Better get in there, John, with Sid, because this is going to be all over. So Dave left, I moved in, so Sid and I. And we couldn't have foreseen this game going the distance and then even beyond the distance into a sudden death decider. Uh, but, but that's how it went. And Barney hit 21 180s in the end. In the first 11 legs of the match, first three sets, he hadn't hit a 180. And yet, somehow he found it, he came back. He hit 21 180s, took this match right to the very death. Taylor throws for the bull, hits the 25. Barney says, in those days, he said, do you want it left in? Barney said, yes. Barney walks up, straight in the bull. And I said, that is the most important bull that Raymond Van Barneveld will have hit in his entire career. So he had the darts in a sudden single leg sudden death playoff. I forget what he kicked off with, but second visit that Taylor made, he hit a 180. And it took him ahead. Barney walks up and hits a 180. And I think I said, repeating myself, Barney will never hit a more important maximum in his career, either up to this point or after it. Because it just gave him the edge towards the end of that leg and he had it just about enough to be able to hit that double top and said gracefully you know John take it take it out take it if Barney had missed I'd have said Sid it's all yours and that's how we used to work uh, the glory moment we shared it we shared it and uh, I want to remember having an argument with Dave Laddie because he didn't he didn't and I thought and I, we only fell out briefly. And I, I thought we were to share these big moments, Dave, not you take them all, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, Barney. And then, of course, I was here last night and I sat out in the audience. I wanted to... I wanted to take it in as, as, a, as an audience spectator. I, I just sensed that it might be his last game ever in the World Championship. Um, so to that extent, uh, I'm pleased that I was there. I have to say that uh, I wasn't pleased that he lost. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, there's two, two different places at the same time in a way. Um, and he was obviously very, very upset. Maybe, maybe he shouldn't have been interviewed straight away like that. It's bad enough when you lose a game, when it's right at the end of your career. Particularly, as we know, that Barney is vulnerable in such moments. Not everybody is, but Barney has been through his career, not been the best of losers. Um, but I've got to say 
that he has been a wonderful, wonderful uh, part of this one magnificent sport for 30 years nearly. I go back to the 6th of January 1991. I didn't know him from Adam. He went away 3-0. I still didn't know him from Adam. But in the end, he showed me and the rest of the darting world and the sporting world uh, that uh, he was indeed a superstar. He doesn't see it that way at the moment because he's still down in the dumps. But he's a superstar and I've done many exhibitions with him. I've had the pleasure of his company on numerous occasions away from competitive darts. I've stopped and talked to him and I've gone to the to the events at Wigan. Uh, on the odd occasion I pop into Wigan and just look around and see some old friends. And uh, I'll miss Barney from the dart scene. But I'm glad that he's gone now and that he can carry on with his exhibition work and his recognition as a superstar will continue in, in, in that, um, uh, in that uh, uh, area of the game. John, it's an absolute pleasure picking your brain on Raymond Van Weinberg's career from 1991 to last night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.